part one of configuring Active Directory roles and services, which is 14% of the 640 exam. We're going to be talking about Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services role, ADLDS. We'll go through installing ADLDS, the ADLDS administration tools, creating OEUs, users, and groups on the ADLDS partitions. We'll talk about the ADLDS application partitions. We'll talk about authorization and authentication. The Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services role, ADLDS, is a database that works similar to Active Directory, but is independent of Active Directory. And it has its own schema, replication topology, and objects. And basically what you would use this for is to support applications that require an LDAP database, but you want to keep them separate from Active Directory. So sometimes it could be used for development just because you want to test something out and you don't want to actually modify the Active Directory schema or create any problems in your forest. Uh, sometimes there might be something that's required by an application or two applications have requirements that are incompatible, so you need to isolate them. So this is very similar to Active Directory. The difference is it doesn't support domains, forests, trees. It just literally has you know users and groups, a schema, replication, and you can set it up with inside your forest to kind of support these applications that have that requirement. We're going to start by installing ADLDS and for that we're going to use Server Manager. Let's go into Server Manager and add in the ADLDS role. So I just clicked on Server Manager down here. I'm going to add a role. Welcome to the wizard. Great. Next. And we want to get Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services. Next. Gives me a little spiel about ADLDS. Notice we have some links here where if you need help understanding it or creating it, you can get some links from there. We're just going to hit Next. It says, all right, I'm going to install this. Fantastic. And we'll give that a minute to install. And we're all set. ADLDS has been installed. Now that we've installed ADLDS, the next step is to create an instance. So I'm going to go down and click on Start. I want to go into Administrative Tools. And then I'm going to click on the Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services Setup Wizard. Welcome to the wizard. Yep, next. Since this is the first instance, we have to make a unique instance. If we wanted replicas of it, we you know if we had a unique in instance already, and then we wanted to make replicas so that we could have fault tolerance, I could choose a replica of an existing instance. But because this is my first, it's got to be a unique instance. So I hit next. I'll give it a name. Instance one is fantastic. Next. And it picks up a port number, and you can see that the default port number is 389 for LDAP and 636 for SSL but because this is a domain controller these ports are already in play and so ADLDS has picked up um, a free port and assigned that it doesn't really matter what the port number is as long as it's not in use by anything else so I'm just gonna leave it at the default and hit next and then yes we want to create an application partition and I'm going to name this O equals ADLDS, C for country equals US. So that's what we'll actually name it. You want to make a note of the ports and the partition name because you're going to need that to connect to it later. So we'll say, OK, great. Next. This is where it's going to put the files. Fantastic. Next. And then it asks what you want to use for a service account. Notice the default is to use the network service account. Um, but if I wanted to, I could actually specify an Active Directory user that I had created for this purpose. I'm simply going to leave it at the default and hit Next. And now it says, well, who's going to administer ADLDS? And it's picked up the currently logged on user, which is I'm logged on as the administrator of the domain. 
If I did have people that were going to administer this or I wanted to regulate that, the ideal would be to go into Active Directory, create some kind of a group, ADLDS Managers, and then use the this account to set that group as being the entity that can manage it. But I'm just going to leave it as the default administrator right now because this is just for lab purposes. So I'm going to hit next. And now it says, do you want to import any of these LDIF files into your application partition? And basically this would just add some capabilities of it, the ability to make users, INET org persons. I'm just going to grab them all in case we need them later. And then hit next. It says, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Fantastic, next. And now it's going to go ahead and install it. And it's a fairly quick install. And then as soon as it's done, we should have our instance. I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. And now we have installed ADLDS. We have an instance. We're ready to move on to the next step. Now that we have our instance installed, we're going to take a look at some of the ADLDS administration tools. We're going to be looking at ADSI Edit, LDPEXE, and the Schema Snap-in. The first tool we're going to look at is ADSI Edit. So you want to come down and click Start, Administrative Tools, ADSI Edit. And what we need to do is connect to the ADLDS instance. So you're going to come up here and right click, connect to. Now you can give this a name so that you remember what it is. It doesn't matter what you call it. And then the connection point you have to type the distinguished name that you gave it in the wizard. So we had given it object name equals ADLDS, ADLDS, country equals US. Now even though we are, it, it is hosted on the domain or server that we're logged into, because it uses a different port, you still have to type the name of the computer by hand. So I'm just going to type in localhost colon and the port that we had seen in the wizard was 52563. And that connects us up. And here's the O equals ADLDS, C equals US that we made. Now those names when you're typing it through in the wizard have to be unique. And even if you have a previous instance that has that name and you delete the instance, you can never reuse that name. It's got to be unique throughout the forest and never have been used before. So this shows me the contents of my partition right now, which is nothing much. I've got a lost and found for deleted items. If I've got some quotas I'm going to set, some roles that are already set up. Um, and we'll be getting into how to use this in a little bit. So that's the first tool we're taking a look at is ADSI Edit. The second tool is LDP and we get that out of Server Manager. So I'm going to double click Roles and then I want to click on Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services. It just takes a second to come up. And we scroll down a little bit here and there's an advanced tools section and here's LDPEXE. So that's going to open up. And just like I did in ADIS, ADSI Edit, I have to make a connection. So I'm going to connect. So I'm going to connect to the local host. The port that I need is that same port, 52563. And then I hit OK. And it connects to my server. And then I still need to come up under connection and click bind. And we're going to bind as the currently logged on user. So I hit OK. And now I'm fully connected into the partition. Now there's not much to see, but you may want to go up under view and say, well, I want to see the tree. OK. And it wants to know the name of this. So the name is O equals ADLDS, C equals US. And here's my tree. You can see that we see the same thing that we saw in ADI, ADSI Edit, just in a little bit different. And sometimes we have to use ADSI Edit, sometimes we have to use LDP. It just depends on what we're trying to do. 
The last tool we're going to take a look at is the schema snap-in. And remember, ADLDS partitions have their own schema. That's one of the selling points of this technology. So if you watched the previous video, earlier video on this, you know if you have not registered the schema DLL, you have to do that. So we'll do a reg SVR32 schema management dot DLL. That makes sure that the snap-in is available inside of MMC. And then I am going to go into MMC, add remove a snap-in, and the one I want is the schema snap-in. Now this is showing me the Active Directory schema. So what I have to do is come in here, right click, and change Active Directory Domain Controller. And I want to say I need to connect to this domain controller or ADLDS instance. And then I'm going to click here and type localhost and then my port number 52563. I hit OK and it says, well, you were connected to Active Directory. You sure you want to connect to this? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And here's the schema that goes along with ADLDS. So it has its own schema. The next topic we're going to take a look at is creating ADLDS OUs, users, and groups, which we're going to do using ADSI Edit. And these would be users and groups. Uh, they're collected in OUs just for organizational purposes, but users and groups that would be used within whatever the application is that uses this particular partition. So I want to go back into ADSI Edit. It's right here in my recently used menu. And it's still connected to my partition, which is great. And so the first thing we're going to do is create an OU. So I'm going to right click, make a new object. And the type of object I want to make is an organizational unit. And let's name this app users. We say next. And then if I wanted to set up more attributes, I can. There's not that much that you can really do. Um, but if you are do have an application where they need you to add an attribute for some reason to the OU, then you can certainly do that. I'm just going to go ahead and click finish. So now I have an OU, which is app users. Now we're going to make a user inside of the app users OU. So we're going to make a new object, a user, and the name is going to be Henry Jones. If I need to, I could do more attributes, whether it's optional or mandatory. And notice I have a number of attributes, whether the account expires, display name, password should be in here, all the same attributes we would see in a normal user. But I'm just going to go ahead and click OK or finish. And now we have a user. And I can come in, I can also set the attributes after the fact. You know, go in, give Mr. Jones a password, Postal code, proxy address, street, anything I need. The last type of object we're going to create is a group. So again, I'm going to come in here and make a new object. This one's going to be a group named app admins. And then I'll click finish. And these are the distant, different attributes that we can set up for the groups. But at the very least, we have the object itself created.